one of our many competitive advantages, our negotiation skills are used by every hostage negotiation team on earth. People ask us on a regular basis, is this cross-cultural? Every hostage negotiation team on earth uses the same eight skills. Because no matter what ethnicity, no matter what culture, no matter what religion, the wiring of human being is what is on the other side. Jihadi John has a limbic system and an amygdala. Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, the head of ISIS, has an Olympic system and an amygdala. And they all function in the same ways. The only people that don't have an emotional makeup that doesn't react like everybody else's are the people that are actually paranoid schizophrenic, when their wiring is actually wrong. People who just have behavior problems or chemical imbalances, we used to be called uh, manic depressive and then got called bipolar, and I don't know what, they change the labels every few years. Those are chemical imbalances. Those are not wiring problems. Those are chemistry problems. And if they just got chemistry problems, then they have a limbic system, and a limbic system functions according to neuroscience. Among those rules are labeling negatives diffuses negatives. Also among those rules are culturally, universally, we have found that asking someone why makes them defensive. And then we found out about this proof of life issue, and we asked ourselves, hmm, how can we use why in a way that works for us? And we literally will say to people, there are a lot of competitors out here that could teach you. You know, Harvard could teach you negotiation. You can learn negotiation from Wharton. Karras is out there. There are no shortage of credible competitors for negotiation knowledge. Why would you ever come to the Black Swan Group? We ask that question all the time. Before the book came out, we'd be standing up in front of a group and I'd say, guys, why listen to a hostage negotiator? And what happens? What do you think happens? Why would you listen to a hostage negotiator? Why would you? Your skills have to work, is what he said. Here's what happens on the people that haven't made up their mind yet. They tell you which part of your value proposition appeals to them. I could say, you should listen to a hostage negotiator because my skills have to work. Or I can look at you and say, why would you do this? And you say the same thing. Now, when does it matter more? to you when you say it. And I begin to understand what aspect. Now, if, if uh, he's a potential client, I say, why would you ever listen to a hostage negotiator? And he says to me, because your skills have to work. Now I use that to continually frame my value proposition because I know that's an element of my value proposition and those are the words that speak to him. And if their mind is 80% made up ahead of time, you have to diagnose what aspects of what you bring to the table matter to them. Because more than likely, every single one of you have anywhere from 10 to 20 reasons why people should do business with you. And if you start out on stuff that doesn't matter to me, how long before I tune you out? Five seconds is a pretty accurate guess. It's roughly three to 10 seconds. Some data says seven seconds. But you're going to blow five, seven, ten seconds on the wrong issue, and I'm going to tune you out. I mean, and there's no shortage. I don't know how many of you have been in pitch presentations and half pitch presentations or half, half product presentations. People hate having a CEO in a room because they're like, damn, CEO's going to interrupt, start asking questions before I can get all the way through my presentation. Well, actually, what does that tell you? It tells you, number one, that he didn't care about everything you said up to that point in time, and what he interrupted John was what he really cared about, right? But, and we see this in an industry after industry after industry. I worked hard on that presentation. I want them to sit there for two hours while I give the whole thing. That, that's when people are really happy, when they get a chance to get through their whole proposal. And then, and ideally, they don't get any hard questions and they roll out of there happy as hell.
right? And then what happens? No sale, no sale right? 